Hey guys, today I'm doing a video about lithium and specifically DIY lithium. So there's been a lot of questions about it and I figured I'd make a video try and explain some of it. So the cells I'm going to start with are Headway 38120 HPs. These are 8 amp hour cells. Uh, four of them will make a 12.8 volt 8 amp hour battery. There is other headway cells out there. They're 38120s. They're not HP though. And they typically have a blue wrapper on them. Those cells you do not want. These are made to handle uh, 80 amps of charge per bank. The blue ones are only about 30 amps of charge per bank. They're higher amp hour, but they don't have the burst amps that we need for car audio. So it's highly recommended that you go with uh, these cells if you're looking at headway. Um, these, they have screws, so they're nice and easy to work with, easy to bust together. And so a bank of them would be four cells, eight amp hour, 80 amps of charge. So that's not quite enough to, that's a maximum charge. So that's not quite enough to deal with um, a stock alternator. So what I recommend is a minimum of two banks of these. And that's 160 amps peak charge. Typically, stock alternator, you'll be fine. If you have a high output alternator, you're going to want more of these. Uh, these cells are also Life Epo 4. They're K2 Energies. These are the same thing that you would find in a JY power battery. Now, the problem with a cell like this is they don't have any connectors on them, they're just flat pads. So to connect these, you need a spot welder, and that's a problem for a lot of people. And then another thing about that is, is these are only 2.8 amp hours or something like that. So you need a whole lot of them to get the capacity that we need. And then you have a whole bunch of connections. So you have a whole bunch of points of failure. That's why I wouldn't recommend something like this. They're great cells. They're powerful. They're compact. Because, I mean, right here you have five banks. That's a tiny little box. And that's, what, like, uh, 2.8 times 5. You guys can do the math. But, yeah. So, like, with these cells... They're not as compact, and you're going to have a hard time, you know, making a bank that's small and powerful, or, or tiny and powerful. Whereas you can with those cells, you know, these are bigger, they're bulkier, you can't do that. Also, another thing is, is you don't want them rubbing together, because eventually it'll wear through this protective coating, and this protective coating is actually needed. Um, I'm not sure about these sp cells specifically, but some other cells, the negative is actually this whole entire case up until where the cap is. And then the cap is separate and that's the positive. So if these cells are rubbing together, they could short out. Or like with these cells too, they have a, you know, paper barrier on them, but you can also get them with vinyl wrap. Actually, there you guys go. You can see that there's a cap on there. And this whole piece here is a negative. So you wouldn't want them rubbing together and shorting out with each other. Um... The yin long cells, these are my favorite for DIY. Takes four of these cells, these type, 
they're 3.2 volts to make a 12.8 volt bank. These, it's they're 2.3 volt, so it's six cells in a bank to make a 48 amp hour bank. And these are lithium titanate, LTO. And the thing with these, why I highly recommend them, is the safety. They're super safe. They're so hard to get to start on fire. The biggest concern is, like I said, with the rubbing, you want to make sure that there's spacing in between your cells. But other than that, like, these cells, they take a ton of abuse. I've seen them dead shorted, uh, recharged, dead shorted again, dropped in a bucket of salt water, cut with grinders, all kinds of crazy stuff. The Russian videos, if you go check them out, um, yeah, they, they do all kinds of crazy stuff with them. And it's super hard to get them to start on fire. Um, these are, so a bank of six of these for 40 amp hour, that'll take 400 amps of peak charge and 400 amps discharge. Uh, they'll support, one bank of these will support about 4,000 watts. A uh, bank of these, I'd say like oh, 800 watts. So, yeah, roughly. So I was running 24 amp hours of headway on 2,000 watts RMS. I was doing just fine. Um, charge voltage. So these, the bank ends up being 13.8 volts. So you have to have a minimum charge voltage of like 14.4 to really see the benefit out of these. And the minimum on these cells is 12 volts. So you don't want to push them past 12 volts. The peak is 16.2 volts, but they don't really do much more over 15.6 from a lot of our testing. So like to me, 15.2 is like the sweet spot. It's, it's uh, enough that your electrical and your vehicle doesn't have problems. Um, like your amps, your head units, whatever else, they're fine with the 15.2. And then you're getting the most power out of your amplifier, everything else. So that's really nice. The maximum on these is 14.6 volts. So those, if you don't have a charging system or that can handle it, or you have computer controlled system and you're stuck with your voltage and there's no way around it, that's pretty much what you're gonna to wanna to do. These you can run with AGM. These you cannot run with AGM. You'll wreck these cells or you'll wreck your AGMs or you'll wreck them both. Either way, you don't wanna do it. It's just bad. Um, balancing. <clears throat> so I haven't been running balanced on any of my cell, on any of my headways or my in lungs. And I've, I haven't had any problems whatsoever, but that all depends on your busing and everything else. And I take my packs apart every once in a while to make sure that they're all good. Check my cells. I like to do that just because over time I've been, you know, testing and checking them and wanting to see how they do. And... I figured I'd see how they do without a balancer. Balancer isn't that expensive. It's like 40 to $60 for a decent balancer. So if you're the kind of guy who just wants to, you know, build a bank and leave it, get yourself a balancer, wire it up. Don't worry about it. Um, it doesn't hurt to check your stuff out of every once in a while. Check your connections, check your, um, Make sure all your screws are still tight and everything like that. These, I'm not sure if you say on them, but it's seven foot pounds of torque. So you don't want nylon threaded nuts on these or anything like that. Because 
you'll snap these off and that's no good. Um, yeah. Oh, and excess power. They're doing these cells actually. They have a DIY store coming out. It's actually up now. They're going to start shipping it within the next month. And they're using DM long cells, which I'm really happy about because of the safety factor. So that's really nice. They're like a rebranded uh, Yin Long. They, they've been working with Yin Long to set, set this all up. So they'll have bars and cases and all that kind of stuff. And I hope balancers and everything else that you need to build your own battery. But so props access power. I'm really happy about them coming out with a product for us DIY guys. And I'm really happy that they brought out something safe because that's always a big concern. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a breakdown of the different kinds of batteries, what you'd be charging, should you have a balancer or not, all that kind of stuff, um, charge voltage, whatever. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. If you want some headways, um, Tom, uh, battery hookup or alarm hookup on eBay, he has these cells right now, really cheap. Excess Power is going to have these. Uh, Battery Hookup also has these K2 cells, if that's something you're really interested in or playing with or whatever. Get yourself some cells and play with them. Best way to learn is do it. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching.